All right, here's the end result. After a little bit of tweaking and removal of the pipe that was there, and you see I removed it fairly cleanly. There's a teeny bit of cleanup I need to do. I hit it with uh, one of these sanding sticks that I got at a Hobby Lobby for like $3 for a pack of 20 of them or something like that. They're not very expensive, but they're great for this little small in area like that. The problem is this is a pretty high grit. I've got a lower grit one that I'll come back in and polish it down with a little bit, like this one here. And primer will help cure up some of that too. Then again, it is also the Millennium Falcon and she's going to have scratches and scuffs and all sorts of stuff over all over her and I'm going to do some of that before. I primer her. I'm going to hit her with some scratches and stuff. But anyhow, you can see I've got the pipe removed. That was way easier than I thought it would be. And I'll show you my deep, my technique in a few minutes. But I wanted to show you this brass rod sitting in place. Okay. It lines up almost exactly where I want her. Alright. Pick the camera up and do a top-down view. So you can see it's lining up exactly how I want it. And I don't know how all of you think. But I think that is going to be an improvement because it doesn't look like a cheap little plastic thing. What I'm going to do now is get the right size drill bit in my drill, drill a couple holes and glue that down and start working on some of the other pipes. So I'm going to be at this for a little while. It's going to take a bit because I've got about 25 pipes to remove and replace. And once I get my technique down on removing the pipes, I'll show all of you what I'm doing. I, I don't have 100% good yet, but I'm getting there. And I think this is going to improve the looks of her quite a bit when I'm all said and done. So I'll be back, show you the final end product of that one, and show you some of the intermediate steps while I'm working on the others. Well, there's the part super glued down. And I think that looks a lot better than the part that was originally there. Lots, lots better. It has more dimensionality to it than, say, this plastic one up here. So here's a good thing to compare it with. This versus this. And I think this is, this is much better than this. So I'm going to go about it and start removing the other ones. And again, once I get my technique down, I'll show you what I'm doing. I don't know how far I'm going to take this because this is a tad bit on the time-consuming part. I spent a good... Well, you watched me bend this one. But I've been at this for about 30 minutes just to do that one. I got 24 more of them to do. And do the math, that's 12 hours. And I don't get that much free time these days to build on this. Having a small business and a girlfriend and a few other things just eats up your time. Keeps you from doing the model building. Plus this isn't something I want to rush. I'm going to have a really nice looking Millennium Falcon when I'm done. And I want to keep it that way and I'll have some botched areas on it. So, I'll get back to building, I'll come back and let you see what I've done. Alrighty, I got pipe number two done. Hold, having a clamp holding the super, hold, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's try that again. I got pipe number two done. It doesn't follow the original course of the pipe that was there. Boy, let's start that over. I have pipe number two done. There's a clamp holding it down while the super glue dries because I've got some long drying super glue. I know, long drying super glue. What's up with that? Um, it allows me to position these things while the glue is drying, though, before the dry glue dries. So I get them precisely where I want them, and then the glue can dry. Like I just found another one that needs to be clamped and re-glued. But anyhow, this doesn't follow where the original pipe did. It does on the deck of the ship. It doesn't want to leave the deck of the ship. I tried, and I got two pieces of brass that I'm throwing away now because I couldn't get them to bend properly. So I gave up on that. But I think that looks a lot better than what was there because it looks more like a pipe now instead of just, you know, a plastic detail that's molded in. All right. While that's curing, I'm going to go work on one of the other pipes on the underside of the ship so that I can alternate sides and get this to work the way I want it to. All right. I'll be back when I have some more work to show. Okay, one more thing I'm doing. On the surface pipes, I don't intend to remove while I'm letting the super glue dry over here. I'm taking my uh, scribing tool and um, one of the guys over at SMA has suggested a whole bunch of different types of scribing tools. 
and I bought them and I'm actually using them to help remove the pipes over here one thing I'm doing is I'm taking the scribing tool and I'm running along the edge of these pipes okay like I've already done this one and to me it's bringing out the detail just a teeny bit more because these pipes don't look good right where they join the plastic they're fine otherwise these smaller pipes and by just running the scribing tool along them you're putting kind of a groove underneath them which suggests pipes now, I don't need to do it very heavily because the scale you're not going to see a whole lot of it but I am going to do it a little bit just to give it an edge so that when I go to paint this thing and do some washes and stuff it will allow the oil because I'll probably do oil washes on this thing to be honest with everyone It'll allow the oil to have a little someplace to bite and gather to accent the pipiness of this okay so I'm just patiently going along here and scribing away okay this is a little bit sturdier in a dental pick I was trying a dental pick earlier and I didn't like the results so I got this guy out and I'm just sitting here doing this it's removing just a teeny bit of plastic probably just enough again to give it slightly a pipey look and I'm trying to be consistent with it because if you're not consistent it'll look like you scribed it instead of look like a pipe so I'm kind of counting how many times I pass on each side of each pipe but anyhow I want to let you guys show one of the little things I'm doing to help detail the ship to give it a little bit of um, dimensionality to it because again I don't want to remove all these pipes I will be here for the next six months doing so I'm only really interested in removing the bigger pipes the ones that look bad the ones that look different like this one okay it flattens out right as it goes across here and it looks bad so this pipe's going to get yanked okay this one looks bad too it doesn't even connect where it's supposed to I mean look there's a gap there so this guy's going to go too but this one I don't want to pull him so I'm just going to take my little scriber remove a little bit of plastic underneath him so it doesn't have such a rectangular look where it joins the ship like that and again I don't have to remove much to give her a suggestion of being a pipe just enough to give it kind of a groove underneath because if you look at the pipes that are already on the ship that I'm adding oh, camera angles really bad right now you notice that's how they look they have kind of an edge underneath like someone took a tool like this and went at them that's what I'm doing I'm gonna walk around the whole ship doing this be back later okay here's the last bit I'm gonna talk about and I gotta get to bed see this right here I started uh, working on the rear engine detail with my scriber you can tell that's a plastic part just molded in when I get to the one on this side it looks a lot better when you scribe out the edges of it to me anyhow it starts to look a little bit more like it's not necessarily a molded in detail okay I'm not 100% perfect with that scriber yet you can tell I'm missing in a few spots and scratching it but this thing's all scratched and beat up I'm gonna add again like I said I'm gonna add a bunch of scratches beat ups dings dents meteor strikes whatever you want to call them all over this thing so it's okay but just wanted to show you that it adds a little bit more shadow, shadows and details to it from what's already there. So if you don't want to go through and redo all your piping with brass like I'm doing here, okay, you don't want to do that, get your scriber out and just scribe along the edges of them because it does improve the detail on them and makes them look just a little bit better. Looks makes them look a little bit more like pipes. When the shadows hit this one just right, it looks like a pipe. Now you guys are in bright light right there, but I mean we're in bright light right there. But if I hit it right, you can see there's a little bit more shadow to it than there would be in the normal part. Simply because I put that little gouge on it. 
It's the same effect I got when I gouged the edges of the saucer up here. Okay, so I'm going to stop for the night. I've done very little on this rear engine deck, but I'm going to get them done. I still got 22 more pipes to replace, just like these, to bring out some more detail. And it's going to take some time. The scribing's faster than doing the pipe work. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. It's much faster than doing that pipe work. I'm flying through that scribing. Especially the more practice I get at it. A good scribing tool helps. I don't know if I'd use this thing for doing panel lines. Because I think the Tamiya tool is better for that. But for this kind of work, a dental pick or something like this guy right here is going to work just fine. Alright? So I'm off to La La Land, Sleepy Land. I have to work tomorrow. Got a big weekend ahead of me. So I will talk to you guys later. Okay, more, you can't go to San Antonio without stopping by and seeing the Alamo. Played quite a role in Texas history. When they were trying to fight their independence away from Mexico, this was like the last stand of a bunch of people like Davy Crockett and Bowie, the guy that made the Bowie knife. And while we're not here in time to go see a tour, we are here in time to at least look at it from the outside and take a look. So, thought I would come by and see the Alamo. Because I haven't seen it. Really haven't. I'm gonna go look at the historical marker. It's right out front. They'll probably tell part of the story. I don't know if you guys can read that. It said, Letter from the Alamo. Commandancy of the Alamo. Bexler, February 24th, 1836, to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world, fellow citizens and compatriots, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the Mexicans in Santa Ana. I have sustained a continual bombardment and cannonade for 24 hours and have not lost a man. The enemy has demanded a surrender at discretion. Otherwise, the garrison are to be put to the sword if the fort is taken, I have answered the demand with a cannon shot, and our flag still waves proudly from the walls. I shall never surrender nor retreat. Then I call on you in the name of liberty, of patriotism, and everything dear to the American character to come to our aid with all dispatch. The enemy is receiving reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or four thousand in four or five days. If this call is neglected, I am determined to sustain, sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his own honor and that of his country. Victory or death. William Barrett Travis, Lieutenant Commander. P.S. The Lord is on our side. When the enemy appeared in sight, we had not three bushels of corn. We have since found in res deserted houses 80 or 90 bushels and gotten to the walls 20 or 30 head of beehives. Travis. I already read the letter. <laughs> this is just that one back here. It's like the last stamp for Texas independence away from Mexico. Cool. And a lot of people gave their lives for independence here. So it does have some meaning. And the fact that like 20 or 30 people held out against three or 4,000 for days is amazing. Utterly amazing. Now it's surrounded by... <laughs> Skyscrapers and hotels. Yep. And the Guinness Book of World Records. The shops. Disco shop. Yeah. yeah. Shops. But the other thing is there's not one tall building in sight. Mm -hmm. It's a war memorial, so no shadow may cast upon it. So all the tall buildings are far away, so it doesn't cast shadows. 